Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm gonna take a DeWalt battery charger and hack it to turn it into a battery powered supply for all my electronics projects. So lately I've been looking at a lot of battery options for the electronics projects that I'm creating because I'd like to have something that isn't dependent on a cord and that could be set out in the middle of nowhere somewhere and still operate and function correctly for hours at a time. Now many of the options that I saw online look like they could work great, but they require some extra effort, making battery packs, that sort of thing. I started to think about all of the DeWalt power tools that I have and the battery packs that come standard on those. And now, <laughs> guilty pleasure of mine is collecting DeWalt tools. And so I have an abundance of these power supplies sitting around doing nothing. I also have an abundance of chargers. And the chargers, really, once you have a couple of them, they really aren't needed. I even have the battery station and inverter, which charges four batteries at a time. So a lot of these individual chargers just are a waste of space to me. It dawned on me that I could use uh, one of these chargers, take out the charging guts, and turn it into a project that instead would use a battery to be a power supply for other projects that I have in mind. What are we waiting for? Let's charge this up and power through. I have several different types of charger and it really doesn't matter, but I chose the DCB101 because it had a little bit more space and I thought that it would be perfect for the components that I want to put inside. In order to open the charger, you're going to need a Torx bit, but also one with what they call a security bit, which means that it's going to have a little post on the inside of the, of the screw head. And so you need a special type of bit, which has a hole in the top, as you can see here, and which makes it uh, so that the post will be out of the way while the Torx edges grab the screw head and extract it. The particular size you need to open these is the T15 and the security bit style. There's a link in the description if you'd like to buy your own security bit set. The hole for the screws is quite deep so I wasn't able to use the bit holder that came with the set but I was able to stick the bit in and then use the screwdriver behind it to uh, loosen the screws and to extract them. only four screws, the lid pops off. You can see there that the actual hardware that with the pins on it is quite small. It isn't screwed on, it just sits on two posts. Simply pry the one clip away and the whole board, assembly, cord, everything comes out of the interior of the charger. And the only thing that we're gonna need out of here is those pins that connect to the actual battery terminals. So first of all, I tried to remove the connector that looks like it's attached there. But as you can see, no matter how hard I pried and lifted and pulled, it actually is soldered on and there's not a removable connector there. In the end, the only option that I really had was to desolder the terminals from the pin hardware and that's what worked for me. Now. This is a fairly simple process. The thing that you have to remember is that these pins are set inside of plastic. So you need to move fairly quickly with the soldering iron. Otherwise you're going to melt the pins in the plastic and you're going to cause them to get loose. I actually did that here with one of the power pins and I needed to use the side cutters to straighten it and get it working again. Once it's desoldered, I just put it in there to make sure it's still fit and solid and it was, it was perfectly solid. Now I took the terminals and shoved them into a battery so that the exposed terminals could be tested. As you can see here, I'm stepping through the uh, voltages between the B plus and the C1, 2, 3, and 4 terminals to see the different voltages at each point. Now each of the cells is broken out here so that you can actually uh, get a different voltage as you can see here according to this chart. You know, you get about four volts at peak charge between each cell, so 4 volts, 8 volts, 12 volts, 16 and 20. You could break these out and simply use these voltages to power your project, but I didn't like that idea mostly because it causes you to have to uh, deplete one set or a couple of the cells separately from the whole battery pack, which means that the efficiency of it is not great because you'll have some cells that are not being depleted to the same level as other cells. And for the life and the health of the entire battery pack, I didn't like that option. 
What I do love is a DC to DC converter, which allows you to put in your battery voltage and then get out whatever voltage you would like. The beautiful thing about these little converters is that the output voltage is going to stay constant even as the battery voltage drops as it's depleted. That way you get you know, a nice constant, in my case, five volts that I'm looking for to power my project or nine volts, 12 volts, whatever you set that number to. They're easily adjustable and they work great. There's a link in the description to buy one of your own and they come in different current amounts so that you can supply as much as you need. The cells in these batteries are actually rated for 30 amps. So you really could power something, you know, quite strong from these batteries. I tried different layouts to see which would fit uh, as many of these uh, converters as I could find and really uh, I could figure out a way that would fit all three of them just by interlocking the cooling fins on the heat sinks but you know I really only need two different voltages here so in the end I decided to go with just two and that'll give adequate spacing and a little better cooling. The next thing I need to do is attach the two leads. I'm just going to use the B plus and B minus terminals. So I'm soldering a red wire to the B plus and a black wire to the B negative, differentiate them. Next, I'm simply going to attach those wires to the input side of the DC converter. The red wire goes to the positive, and I'm gonna also use a parallel jumper, which will get me over to the other one so that the inputs of both of them will be tied to the battery. These terminal uh, holes are actually pretty small, but I used wire that was higher engaged so that that current that can flow is not gonna be limited. Each of these converters is limited at eight amps, but that's a combined amperage of 16 amps. So I wanted to use a fairly large wire, and this is a number 18 wire being used here. I don't intend on using that full amperage, but because it's rated as that, I might as well use wire that has an ampacity close to what I need. Once that's done, I'm gonna plug the module back into the battery and I'm going to test the output voltage so that I can tweak it to exactly what I want. By default, they're set about 12 volt, but by loosening the screw, you can back the voltage down. Um, by turning it counterclockwise, the voltage goes down. By turning it clockwise, the voltage goes up. You have quite the range from one and a half volts to 36 volts. So here I'm going to choose five volts. I'm gonna make it 5.1 just to give myself a slight bit of buffer. And then for the second module, I'm going to use nine volts as my output voltage. Again, I'm gonna set it to 9.1, but I'm just going to loosen that little screw so that it dials it right down to the volts that I want. I'm also demonstrating here what happens if you plug this module into a 12 volt battery instead of the 20 volt. And you can see I still get the 5.1 and I still get the 9.1, which is the beauty of these converters. They really do uh, work and put out a consistent voltage no matter what supply is attached to them. It really makes it versatile so I can use any battery type in this particular power supply. With the connections made, I'm now gonna use some hot glue to secure the converters to the inside of the charger housing and simply just going to stick them in place. That's going to be enough and just to uh, lock it all down. This was the perfect time to run out of glue so after putting a couple of beads down I had to go get another glue stick. But getting all of that attached and, and secured was really quite simple. I wanted to leave as much room on the output terminal side so that it would be easy to insert the wires, but really that's the spacing that I was looking for. Now I'm simply gonna put the terminal module back on the post where it belongs and just tuck the wires out of the way. I decided to hot glue the wires as well so they won't be moving around on the inside of the supply. Next, I need to put the wires that are gonna to connect to these two different uh, converters, which are going to supply my project. I'm using a type A USB so that a regular USB cable could plug into it. So I strip away the outer jacket and then strip away the insulation underneath. Now there are four wires with USB, but I'm only gonna use the red and black, which are the two power wires for now. And that will be what I use to connect to the two terminals, red to the positive terminal, black to the negative terminal, and it works just like you would expect. 
These wires are very fine, a little bit difficult to strip with a standard wire stripper. There are smaller gauge uh, wire strippers that you can get, and so that's a, a recommendation how to make the process a little easier for yourself. I needed the barrel connector from a 9 volt power supply, so I simply cut that off, measured it to the length that I wanted, and now I'll be able to use that to connect to my project. The Arduino Uno especially is something that takes a 9 volt input with a barrel plug, so this is why I'm using this. I also wanted to make sure I knew what the continuity of the plug was. The post of the plug is supposed to be positive and the sleeve or barrel is supposed to be negative. So I just confirmed that those are correct. In order to get the cable to fit nicely on the outside, I just used the soldering iron to melt a bit of a hole for it to fit in. And well, for the nine volt adapter, I just threaded it around where the original cord was. Now it's time to put it back together. And when I did that, I found that there was a plastic post, support post that's in there. I cut the support post away with a pair of side cutters and now it all fits together nice and tight. I used the soldering iron again to make a little room in the lid so that that cord's gonna come through nice and easy. And now I'm just gonna screw it back together. I also have included in the description a link to some longer shank screw bits, which would have made this process just a little bit easier. The bits would have reached all the way to the bottom of the holes and could have stayed secure in the screwdriver. With it all complete, I'm once again going to check the voltage, and yes, I'm still getting 9.1. It tells me it's working right. I hooked that 9 volt adapter up to an Arduino, and sure enough, I'm getting the power lights to come on, and it does not matter whether I use a 12 volt or 20 volt battery. Success. Next, I hooked it up to a Raspberry Pi and the 5 volt connector through the USB, and you can see that it works great. However, this does not charge an iPhone. iPhones in particular, and some other electronics, require a voltage divider to be included on the pins that are not the power pins, on the green and the white wires. So uh, this is the diagram that you would see if you wanted to connect that voltage divider. And I may add this in the future. I don't really plan to charge my phone off of this, but I may add this in the future. So keep looking for other videos where I will add this voltage divider array here and so that you are getting two volts on pin three and about two and a half volts on pin two which is what the iPhone needs to see in order to charge correctly. Here's a look at the finished product nice and easy that very lightweight and simply takes any size battery I can throw at it. So now you can see how you can turn a charger for one of your favorite cordless tool brands and turn it into a power supply that can be used to power other things. These batteries are in you know, ready supply, the price is good, they're uh, reliable and, and made of heavy duty components, and so they're perfect for this type of project. I hope it inspires you to try your own power supply, and if you're interested in finding out more about DeWalt power tools or you know, different hacks that you can do to get the most out of your equipment, you know, let me know in the comments and we'll try another project. If you enjoy these types of projects, why don't you hit subscribe? and ring the bell to be notified of future videos. We release a new one every week, and the worst that could happen is you might find something interesting along the way. That's it for this project, but I'm not done with the DeWalt hacks yet. I have plenty more ideas how to use my existing tools and batteries in a way that I haven't ever dreamed of before. In all your DIY projects, and all the new and improved ideas you try out, don't be afraid to be balder.